Hello, guys. Did you know that there is a built-in looper in the Korg Minilog XD that you can start layer sounds on top of each other? Basically, you can use the built-in delay effect with a very low tempo to achieve that. I got this idea from one of the recent Korg video on the Prolog. And since Minilog XD share the same effect, I thought maybe I should give it a try, and it turned out to be working very well. Without further ado, let's get into it. So first of all,、uh, let's choose a、um, patch. In this case, this is a custom patch I made, kind of a pad style patch.、Uh, now we do want to enable the delay. Um, in the Korg Minilog XD, what we want to do is to choose any delay with the BPM、uh, at the end. So in this case, I'm choosing、um, mono BPM. What that means is that、um, the delay effect will directly tied to the、uh, tempo or BPM、uh, that you selected.、Um, then we need to Turn the knob to the time, to all the way to the maximum value, so that the delay effect will be happening across the whole bar. The depths, we choose also the maximum value、uh, for now.、Um, what that means that、um, once you、um, play some notes, it will、uh, running throughout the whole BPM, and then replay it back. At the beginning、uh, of the of the bar. So now let's choose BPM. So if I turn the tempo to all the way to the lowest value, fifty six, then you can see see it starts to create this loop, what you already played before. The length of the loop will directly depending on the tempo you are selecting. The lower the tempo, the longer the loop. So as you may notice, it's pretty short, right? So I've been、uh, doing some experiment with this、uh, Minilog XD. Although the tempo in here, the lowest value is 56. Let me turn off the delay. You can、um, make the tempo even slower by dive into the menu. So if you press Edit Mode and choose、uh, Sequence Edit, and then click this button, it will show the current BPM being 56, the lowest you can get from the knob. However, you can turn this program knob to even lower BPM, which will makes the loop、uh, loop even longer. Uh, I've been play around with this、uh, a lot, and I finally realized the long,、uh, the lowest BPM or the the longest loop you can get out of this Minilog XD is actually 44 BPM. Anything lower than that, although it's assuming the BPM will,、um, the loop will be、um, longer. However, I think the buffer that this unit、uh, has don't have that capability. So if you even choose a lower value of the BPM, although the the whole、um, sequence will be kind of play whatever. For example,、um, if you choose thirty, you won't be able to store the loop that is thirty BPM. So the maximum value you can set is forty four. Right, that's the hardware limitation. Now if I choose forty four, let's try again. You will immediately notice that because there's no metronome or anything,、uh, you don't really know when the loop finished. So it's very hard to control how you're gonna play or improvise. In this case, adding an external gear to indicate the、uh, the beat、um, kind of makes sense. So that's why I'm、uh, I'm I'm using the drum brute impact in this case,、so、because I'm setting the BPM to 44, so I need to match the BPM in the、uh, drum machine. 
So as you can see, I'm choosing I'm choosing 44 BPM, and then I enable the kick uh, area to um, step. So it will be uh, something like that, right? So it indicates how long is the uh, the whole loop, and because we have that, we can start to improvise and know exactly when this whole bar is gonna be finished. I need to um, move the camera back to here. Now, um, let me enable the delay uh, again. Remember, this is mono. Um, let me get out of the menu. So remember, this is the delay mono BPM being 44. Now, I just need to wait for the end of the loop of this beat and then start to improvise on top of that. As you can see, with the help of the uh, drum machine, I know exactly where uh, this loop finished, so I can start to improvise on top of that. Um, you may notice uh, this uh, loop uh, will just continually play and then whatever you already played will be played back regardlessly, right? I do want to um, experiment how this can benefit your uh, improvisation. You can probably imagine that um, using the uh, sequencer, building sequencer, you can also create the improvisation based on kind of the chord progression. Uh, so what's the benefit of um, using this uh, looper? Uh, the one thing I can see is that you can actually, because it's kind of the audio playback, so it doesn't really care about all the parameter changes, um, what you already played will be always playback exactly the way it used to be. Um, on the contrary, if you use a uh, sequencer, uh, whatever parameters you decide to change will not only affect what you are about to play, but also affect uh, what you already been recorded, right? So this is a slightly difference in between the playback the, uh, sequencer and the loop, uh, loop using the delay effect. So I'll show you what I mean. So there is some opportunity there. So I'll just create and uh, start the um, beat again. Right, I'm creating a loop already. Uh, notice that um, the cutoff is kind of uh, uh, in the middle, so it's kind of this mild uh, timber. However, I can start to create different cutoff uh, timber on top of that without uh, affecting what already been recorded, right? As you can see, I just play the note at a higher range, but with a higher value of the cutoff. So it's kind of cut through uh, um, this um, pad progression. I can even create those uh, effects by turning the uh, resonance to the higher value. Right? So this give you a lot of opportunity there to change the timbre of certain loops, right? One problem I found though is that this looper style improvise does contains a problem. That is, whatever you played, you kind of won't be able to erase, right? Uh, eventually, um, the sound is layering on top of each other, eventually create this mess. The notes are too much. 
Uh, one thing to work around that, I uh, realized that I can actually decrease the value of the depth to a lower value, right? What that does mean uh, is that um, this kind of the delay vex won't uh, be always there. To lower the value, it will gradually fade out, right? So what I like to do is to turn the knob to probably um, around four o'clock, right? So it won't stay there forever. As you can see, all the previous loop has gradually fade out, uh, giving the space for you to improvise more notes on top of each other. As you may notice, this looper style uh, improvisation gives you a completely different feel compared to play melody over the chord progression using the sequencer. Because you need to play less note and really think about the relationship between what you are about to play and what you just played. Also, um, the old loop audio, if you choose uh, depths properly, will eventually fade away. The later loop takes the whole music to another direction and keep evolving itself. That to me is kind of uh, give me another dimension in the music production also inspired me to create the music differently. If you enjoy this video, please hit the like button below and also consider subscribe my channel where I create synth tutorial and play doorless jamming now and then. Please leave a comment below what do you think about this video and also what kind of video you would like to see in the future. Thanks for your support, have a nice day and I'll see you next time.